Hello! Welcome to my bookshelf and today I'll be doing the end of the year reading survey. I found this survey off of Books and Lala's channel. I don't think it originated with her but this is like at least the version of the survey that I found. I'm sure that there's variations on the questions. But either way, there's a list of questions to ask about the last reading year that you had to kind of give everyone an update on um, how it went for me and the, the things I enjoyed reading from that last year. So let's just jump on in. Um, the first question is, how many books did you read last year? I read 56 books. Uh, my goal was 50, so I surpassed my goal, which is really exciting. The next question is, what was your most read genre? Um, this was a little difficult for me just because I purposefully tried to read from a variety of different genres, so it really wasn't an overwhelming obvious winner, to be honest. If you include both YA and adult versions of this, I would say that the most popular genre for me was science fiction of some sort. This would also include books that included some fantastical elements in it, but I would not label them as a strict fantasy per se. Um, this also included some dystopians as well. Not that I read a whole lot, but I did have a few, and I kind of just included that in this category when I was tallying up my genres. So, more or less science fiction. The next question is, what was your longest and shortest book that you read this year? Um, longest would have to be Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. It is a whopping 671 pages long. It is long. Um, and I will say it feels long too. I think that book could have used some more editing, maybe an abridgment because it is a classic at this point. But I think that the content is interesting overall, but I think there's a lot of conversations and things that go on a bit too long. Um, that could be condensed. But I do think that if you're able to get through it, I think it is worth the read. I do think it's an enjoyable book overall, but it's it's definitely a long one. The shortest book I read, um, this may or may not count, but it's actually an encyclical, which is a letter that the Pope sends to the bishops. It's basically like a teaching on a very specific area. Um, this one was called On the Christian Meaning of Human Suffering. It's a long title, but a very short book. It was like 99 pages, and that's actually because I got it in book form. So it also includes kind of some questions and like uh, thoughts and, and just things for you to think about um, as well uh, throughout the encyclical. And you know, if you're into that kind of thing, I would definitely recommend it. I thought it was really well written, you know, even though this is, you know, a theological topic. I think that uh, Pope John Paul II, which I don't know if I said, he's the Pope that wrote it, um, <laughs> uh, he, he does a great job of explaining it in an easy to understand way, which is definitely not an easy feat. So I definitely, you know, applaud you for doing that. And it is something that I do hope to uh, reread in the future. Um, but if you get 99 pages, that's definitely a book. And it is book form. That's the way I read it. Um, that would definitely have to be the shortest book, otherwise it'd probably be like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The next question is, what was your favorite book published in 2017? Um, when I first read this question, I honestly didn't, I wasn't sure if I had even read any books published this year because I just don't, but I have actually. Um, and the one I want to talk about, the one that I really, really liked, it was actually a library book. So in total, I read three books that were actually published this year, and I was very surprised to find that out, but I did. Um, the one I decided to officially pick for this list is Three Years with the Rat by Jay Hosking. It's kind of a complicated book to explain, to be honest. Um, the basic premise is that our main character's sister and her boyfriend, they're both scientists and they were researchers and they were, you know, working on this big experiment, I guess. They go missing mysteriously a year after each other. It's a really uniquely told story and I appreciate the, you know, the unique storytelling and I just, I really, really enjoyed this book. I was so surprised by it just because I had never heard of it. It's a complete, it was just a completely random book that I picked up at the library. The cover caught my eye and I read the synopsis and it sounded interesting so I was like, sure, why not? And honestly, it was such a great choice because I really love it and I do want to own it one day. So that would definitely be my favorite book published last year. And the next question is your favorite debut book that was published in 2017. I would probably, again, go with Three Years with the Rat. I'm pretty sure that's his one and only book to date. I think this was just a great debut, and I would love to read more from him, to be honest. I think he's great. So, um, moving right along, the next question is favorite book that was not published this year. This was obviously a lot more challenging because, you know, I only read three books that were published this year, so 53 books that weren't. So that's a lot to choose from. 
Um, and there were a decent amount of books that I really liked, so that also made it challenging. But I decided to go with The Kite Runner by Khalid Hosiani. It was a fantastic book. I was just so engaged on every single page. Like, it... I don't know. I just... I really loved the writing, and I loved the message of the story. And, I mean, ultimately this book, I think, is about overcoming or just dealing with trauma. There's trauma discussed in here in some detail, so obviously if you're very sensitive to those kinds of topics, you know, this might not be the book for you. Like, I was very moved by this book. I, I've i never cried this hard while reading a book. It, it was kind of hard to get through in some sense, but I felt like the book was authentic and real to these specific experiences, um, which is, I feel, good as a, you know, as far as writing goes, but obviously could potentially trigger someone that isn't ready to deal with those kinds of things. So I would like to put that wording out there, but I do think that it's a really well-written book. Okay, the next question is book that lived up to the hype surrounding it. There were actually a couple books that come to mind, but I'm gonna go with Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. There were a couple books that I think would fit this category for me, to be honest. I was nervous going in because I only heard great things about this book and it just seemed odd to me just because of the 80s nostalgia and video games. I'm like, how does that even work and how is it really that great, you know? <laughs> so I was really skeptical going in, but I thought anyway that it lived up to all the hype. You know, I also really enjoyed it and I was kind of surprised too because, you know, I'm not... I wasn't born in the 80s. I don't really necessarily have first-hand nostalgia for the 80s, so I was kind of surprised by what I did know from the 80s, but also the fact that it doesn't really matter if you enjoy the 80s to fully enjoy the book. Obviously, I think that you would enjoy it, like, on another level if you grew up during the 80s, but I just think it's a good book, just in general, so I was really happily surprised with it. The next question is, what book did not live up to the hype? This is kind of tricky because, so my initial thought was the Divergent series. Um, I read both Insurgent and Allegiant this year, and I did not like them at all. <laughs> and I don't know if I can really officially put this down as did not live up to the hype because, because I've heard that a lot of people don't like Allegiant, so there really wasn't hype for that per se. So that all being said, I feel like I should pick one that was more hyped that I really didn't enjoy that much. So let me explain this next choice, because it's not completely what you think it is. So um, I'm going to go with Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. I don't hate this book at all. I actually very, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but I gave it a three star. It's not like one of my all-time favorites now. Like, it's three star. Like, it's all right. It's good. It was definitely better than I thought it was going to be. But the hype for that is just so extremely high. Like, everyone seems to love this book. So for me, it didn't live up to the hype, but it's not a bad book. It was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be just because I don't like romance books, so I just, I was not into that. You know, I was a little nervous about jumping into it. But um, something I learned this year is that maybe I don't hate romance books as much as I thought I did. Um, and so I did really enjoy this, but at the same time, you know, it didn't blow me out of the water. Uh, it didn't quite live up to the hype, but not necessarily a bad book. Uh, the next question is, book that felt like the biggest accomplishment? I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that. Um, I'm just going to take it as a book that was kind of difficult to get through, that I was happy to have finished, and that would be Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Like I mentioned before, it's 671 pages and it feels like it. So yeah, um, that definitely was a huge accomplishment for me. Also, it's a classic. Uh, the next question is, what was your favorite character? This is hard for me. I decided to go with Captain Thorne um, from the Lunar Chronicles. He's definitely my favorite character in that story, and for some reason, he was one of the only characters that really jumped to mind when I was trying to come up with this question. So I guess he's made a big impact on me. He's just such a fun character. He's so goofy and over the top, and I just love him. I don't know why, but he's just so fun. <laughs> so I would have to go with Captain Thorne. The next question is, what was your least favorite character? This was also kind of tricky for me, but the only person that really came to mind was Lindsay from... Before I Fall. I, well, I hate most of the characters in Before I Fall, to be honest. Um, the only person I didn't hate was Sam's love interest or eventual love interest. He was the only really redeeming person. Sam does eventually redeem herself. 
Uh, but it takes quite a bit into the book for her to redeem herself. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, Lindsay was so obnoxious, um, along with pretty much everyone else, but she was definitely the worst. Um, so that just kind of goes without saying, my least favorite character. Uh, the next question is, what was the most shocking moment or most shocking book? I guess I'm going to go with A Cure for Suicide by Jesse Ball. Shocking in the sense that I was not expecting that, and I was very disappointed, actually. By how the story went. The first half of the book is very interesting, it's pretty straightforward, it's just a normal story, right? And then like halfway through there's this random weird, weird like taken out of the story and then there's this huge long, very long, like many 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 pages of more or less exposition dump explaining like what was really going on the entire time and then it kind of jumps back to the story but from a different characters point of view and then there's a random play thrown in there, and then it ends on a cliffhanger. So it was shocking, but not for good reasons. So I was very disappointed by this shocking bug. It was just a weird experience, to be honest, and not in a good way. Uh, the next question is, what was your favorite couple? This is also difficult for me because, like I said, I don't really go to my way to read romances. My first thought was Katie and Ezra from uh, the Illuminae Files. I did really enjoy them a lot. I mean, they really kind of are the story, so if you don't like them, that's gonna be a problem. Um, I do really enjoy them, they're very fun. But also, having talked about this, I think I also want to give at least an honorable mention to um, Simon and Blue from Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. They were very cute. Very, very cute. So they definitely have to be on there too, but they're both great. Great couples. So the next question is the best written book. And I like this question. This was difficult as well because I think there were a couple books that I thought were very well written, um, but I guess to kind of have some variety in my answers, I'm going to go with The Unseen World by Liz Moore. I thought that it was a really well written book. A lot happens and it, it definitely goes in places I was not expecting it to go. Like, I don't know how to say much about this book without kind of ruining the book a little bit, but more or less, our main character, um, we see her grow up a bit. So she's like a teenager at the beginning of the book. At some point things happen and she's trying to figure out more about her father. And so a lot of the story is trying to explore who he really is in his past. But so much more happens than that. There's so much more to the story than that. That's just kind of, I guess, the driving force that carries you through the book. But I was just happily surprised by the book and I just think that it all really worked really well together in a way that I just didn't expect. And, and I was just really happily surprised by. So I love that book. It's also a book I want to get. It was really, really good. Uh, the next question is book that you push the most people to read. Um, this is also a difficult question because most of my friends and family do not read, so I am not pushing books to people. Um, I would have to say The Kite Runner, though, because I read that for class and I had to present on it in class, so I was pushing all of them to read it. So there you have it. <laughs> That's a lot of people right there. Uh, the next question is, what was your favorite cover of the year that I'm assuming you read? Um, this also is just a, a book that was published this year, so that works too on that level. Um, I'm going to go with A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina. It's got a wonderful silhouette on it, which I absolutely love silhouettes. It's my favorite, um, just kind of pictures and images in general. It's a very cool cover. Um, it's also very velvety, so I love the cover for that reason as well. What was your favorite adaptation? Um, I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to get at here, so I just went with what was your favorite book to movie adaptation? And I guess based off of the books that I read this year, I would have to go with Shutter Island, which in my opinion is a better movie than book, but they're pretty darn similar, and I'm kind of biased because I watched the movie first many times. So I do really, really love that movie. It's great. You should watch it. Or read the book. I would say pick one because, they're, like I said, pretty much the same or just let a lot of time pass between the two so then you kind of forget one and you can enjoy both of them. So, there you go. Uh, next question, what book made you cry the most? I more or less answered this earlier with The Kite Runner because like I said, I've never cried that much for a book before. Um, let's see, what book made you laugh the most? This is hard because books sometimes make me chuckle, maybe? <laughs> but I wouldn't say most books make me actually laugh. But I would have to go with either The Gates by John Connolly, or The Princess Bride by William Goldman, both of which 
made me just so happy inside. Um, so more or less laughed, but inside. My, what is my new favorite author? And this is kind of a fun fact. Most of the books that I read this year were from authors I never read before, which is really cool to me. So there's a lot to choose from, so that makes it difficult. I mean, any of the authors that I've been talking about thus far are really all new favorites. I decided to go with Liz Moore though, just because like I said, her book was really well written. And I just feel like I would want to read more from her because her writing was really, really good. Ooh, what is what was your guilty pleasure read? Like I said, I don't really I don't really read romance, and I definitely don't read smutty romance, so it's definitely not going to be a book like that. I would say the Lunar Chronicles. Maybe that's a um, unpopular opinion to consider that a guilty pleasure read. I only say that just because while I I do enjoy the Lunar Chronicles quite a bit, I would not say that it's a highbrow literature. It's entertaining. But it's a little bit of mindless entertaining. You kind of have to turn your brain off a little bit for it. But it is really, really fun. And I do really enjoy it. It is very overly convenient <laughs> in places. You know, it has problems. But it is a really, really fun read. Um, what was your favorite reread? This was hard because I did read a couple books. But all of which were disappointing rereads. I would have to say The House of the Scorpion uh, by Nancy Farmer. Just because she... I, for a long time, called it one of my favorite books of all time. It was not the best to reread this year just because I've read it so many times, so I knew every single beat, but I do really, really enjoy this story overall. But I would still say it was better than probably the other books I've reread, so I would have to give it to The House of the Scorpion. Uh, the next question is, were you happy with your reading year? And that would be a resounding yes. Not only did I uh, actually read this year, which was an accomplishment, I actually met my reading goal on Goodreads, which is really, really exciting. And I started this channel, so this has been an amazing reading year. And then the last question is, what would you do different next year? I have a whole video on my goals for next year. Um, more or less, I want to read more. And I want to um, control my TBR situation, because that just went way out of hand last year. Um, so hopefully I can do that in the upcoming year. Alright, so that was my end of the year reading survey questionnaire, if you will. Um, this was a lot of fun to do, and I hope that next year that I can do this again and kind of compare notes and see if anything has changed. It'll be really interesting to see how my answers change. Um, throughout the year. So with that, I just want to, as always, thank you guys so, so very much for watching this video, and until next time.